Next thing we're going to talk about is selection tools. Selection tools basically create a stencil that allows you to make changes to certain areas of your work, but it's going to protect the rest of your document or picture from those changes. And there are two main ways to make selections. You can either use shapes to create selections, or you can select things by color. The first thing that we're going to talk about is how to make selections using shapes. So I'm going to come over here and click on the elliptical marquee tool. If I control click or right click it, I can see all of the tools that are hidden underneath it. There's the rectangular marquee tool and the single row column and the single, uh, or sorry, the single row and the single column. The main ones we're going to use are the rectangular and the elliptical. So I've got the elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to bring it onto my document and simply kill it, click and drag. And when I release, I'm going to have these marching ants that create a stencil. So whatever I do to this document is only going to affect the area inside of those marching ants. Everything outside of it will be protected. So if I take the paint bucket and I click inside of the selection, it's going to paint the area inside of that selection green. Now, if I want to get rid of this selection right here and I want to do some work somewhere else, I can either use the marquee tool and click outside of the selection. I can also press Command D for deselect. And that's a shortcut that basically keeps me from having to come up to the main menu and click select, deselect. So the fast way to do that is to just press Command D. Now let's say that I want to make to use the elliptical marquee tool to make a perfect circle. I'm going to hold the shift key down while I drag and no matter how big or small I make it it's going to constrain the proportions. What that means is it's going to keep the width and the height exactly the same and that's going to create a perfect circle for me. So I'm going to press command D again to deselect. If I can uh, control click or right click on the this marquee tool I can select the other tools here so I can do the same thing with the rectangular marquee tool. If I click and drag and release I can make a selection of any size or proportion that's a rectangle. If I want to make it into a perfect square like I did with the perfect circle I'm just gonna hold down the shift key as I drag and no matter how big or small I make it it's going to constrain the proportion so that the width is always the exact same as the height and that gives me a, a perfect square. Now if I don't want to make just squares and circles, if I want to make a shape that's a little bit more irregular, I can use these lasso tools. I'm going to control click on the lasso tools and see all of the lasso tools here. The regular lasso tool allows me to draw freehand and create shapes that way. The problem with this tool is that the selection is only going to look as nice as my drawing. So if my hand is shaking somewhere then that's going to show up in the selection. And that's usually not what you want to do. Another way, there's there's another tool that that can do curves and straight lines together uh, that looks a lot nicer, a lot more polished and that's the pen tool down here. But we're not going to talk about that right now because that's kind of tricky to learn how to use. That'll be in a later lesson. But if, let's say I wanted to use the lasso tool. I wanted to make some kind of polygon shape with straight sides. I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool. And I'm just going to click everywhere that I want there to be a corner. And you see as I get back to where I started, that little circle appears to the bottom right hand side of the tool icon. And that means that if I click right now, it will close off the shape and create the selection for me. And now I have a selection that's made out of really nice straight lines that I, I could never have drawn the lines this straight by hand using the regular lasso tool. So those are some different ways to create selections based on shape. However, if we want to make a selection based on color, there are some different tools that we would use. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and create some shapes with some different colors so that you can see how one of those works. Sorry, I accidentally deselected. I'm going to go up to Select and click Reselect. Back to my Paint Bucket tool. And then I'm going to deselect. Now, this is the Magic Wand tool. And it's paired up with the Quick Selection tool. The Magic Wand tool is going to select things by color. And I just click on the color that I want. And it's going to select everything that is that same color. Or I can click on this different shape. And it's going to select everything that's that color. So, and another thing that you could do with this tool, let's say that we have a gap between the top part of the shape and the bottom part of the shape. Now, if I click contiguous, I can select only the part of the shape where the same green color is all connected to each other, like this. Notice that this is the same color but since it's got a gap between it, this white line between it, it's not going to select that. It's only selecting colors that are the same color and that are touching each other. So if I unclick the contiguous box and click here again, notice now it's selecting everything that has that color, whether it's touching or not. I'm going to do something different here to, just to show a limitation of the magic wand tool. I'm going to use the gradient tool. And I'm going to create a gradient of color throughout the shape. Now here's the issue is that now when I use the magic wand tool, it's only selecting colors that are really close to each other. So as the color fades into a different color, I can't reselect the shape anymore. So that's one limitation. Now if I want to add to the selection, the easiest way to do that is to just click and hold shift. And then I continue clicking until I get the whole area selected that I want to select. It's just by holding shift I'm simply adding to the selection. And there's some other ways to do that using these tools up here. We're not going to go into that right now. So I'm going to deselect right here and I'm going to show you how to use a different tool called the uh, quick select tool. I'm going to come up here to my document tabs. We didn't talk about these earlier but when you have more than one document open in Photoshop you get these document tabs right here that allow you to switch back and forth between different documents that you may have open. So I'm going to go to this document tab with the picture of the baby. And let's say that I wanted to select the background. I'm fit screen first. I wanted to select the background. I'm going to get the quick select tool or quick selection tool. And I'm going to just start pulling the quick selection tool around the area that I want to create the selection. Now you'll notice that right up here where the contrast between the colors is really strong that it made pretty good a, a pretty had a pretty good guess about where I wanted to make my selection. But as we get down here to this box with these beiges and browns that are kind of similar to the colors in the fence back here, it started to make some mistakes in guessing where I wanted the selection to be. That's one drawback of the quick selection tool is that if you have colors that are similar, that are next to each other, uh, you're probably going to have to go back and do some modification to the selection. So I'm going to zoom in right here. And then I'm going to go back up to my Quick Select tool. And notice that my brush is really big. I need to change my brush size so that it kind of fits in the area that I'm trying to, um, to modify the selection on. 
Now all of this stuff is selected right here, so I want to subtract from the selection. So I'm going to click on this icon of the tool with the minus sign on it, and that's going to subtract from the selection. So I'm just going to run this tool down into this area and kind of brush around the areas that I want to remove from the selection. And here you can see it removed too much, so I'm going to switch back to the plus tool. And I'm going to come in here and just try to modify it until I've got my selection about where I want it. As you can see, this isn't uh, extremely uh, accurate with how it selects, but for some for some purposes, it's good enough. So I've got the background selected, and I could spend more time removing this corner of the box and the stool from the selection, but just for the purposes of this demonstration, I can now uh, come and change the color of the background. Or, or do anything that I want to the background. Uh, let's see. I accidentally deselected. I meant to undo that. So another thing that I might want to do is come up here into filter. Come up here into filter. And maybe I want to blur the background. But I don't want to blur the baby. 